There was a golden age for me when it was just my mother and myself, and this is still the idealized world I long for. Still the mythic primordial time, the paradisiacal status quo ante that I persistently hearken back to, whose restoration is at the core of a mystico-fascist politics. The world that my mother and I created for ourselves is very refined. And I always thought of everything that lay beyond it as a kind of oceanic sewer. And when I realized that it was no longer possible to maintain the purity, the, uh, the exclusivity of that sublime world, it was, it was very difficult for me for a very long time. I loved poetry, but suddenly the only poems that interested me anymore were the ingredient lists on cans of dog food and the litany of side effects in pharmaceutical ads. It was as if a witch man from the netherworld was magically eating my insides. Finally, one afternoon, I drank an entire bottle of Nova Histine elixir and melted, one by one, a box full of my most prized crayons, the ones reserved for my jet fighter drawings, in the hot steam that issued continuously from the vaporizer in my bedroom, a young valetudinarian's rite of passage. Then I tried to melt my plastic Civil War soldiers. Would you believe that after all those years I still have several of the more grotesquely misshapen ones that I keep in a jar? But my mother and I have preserved our beautiful closeness. And I think at this stage in our lives we're happiest when we're able to descant upon our grievances and the grave injustices to which we've been subjected Happiest when we're reenacting some tragic event, some traumatic in iniquity, something that is for us like the Battle of Karbala is for the Shia Muslims, or like the Battle of Kosovo in 1389 is for the Serbians. It's so obvious to me that the fact that I'm going to be reading my book at the food court tonight is meant to evoke the, quote, eating books, end of quote, of my childhood that my mother spoke about. Those books like The Tawny Scrawny Lion or The Musicians of Bremen that she'd read to me as I ate. And I guess I was hoping that Gone with the Mind might, here at this food court, perhaps become the eating book of some other withdrawn, delicate, mother-fixated boy. But since you guys don't seem to me particularly withdrawn, delicate, or mother-fixated, the fast food workers don't react in any way to this. And I also think that reading here at this food court is an homage, a kind of, uh, a kind of ceremonial reenactment of those lunches at the birdcage at Lord & Taylor that my mom and I used to enjoy, just the two of us talking and talking. First my mom, and I'd sit there and listen so intently, and then me, and she'd listen and smile, just like tonight, here. You know, in Shakespeare's play, King Lear says to his daughter Cordelia, Come, let's away to prison. We two alone will sing like birds i' the cage. When thou dost ask me blessing, I'll kneel down and ask of thee forgiveness. So we'll live and pray and sing and tell old tales and laugh. at Gilded Butterflies. Isn't that just amazing? We two alone, like birds in the cage. That's my mom and me at the bird cage at Lord & Taylor. I mean, come on, right? Telling old tales and laughing at Gilded Butterflies, right?
Armin May, which was a 42-year-old computer expert from a small German town called Rottenburg, who in 2001 posted an advertisement on the website, The Cannibal Cafe, stating that he was, quote, looking for a well-built well 18 to 30-year-old to be slaughtered and then consumed. Bernd Jürgen Armando Brandes, an engineer from Berlin, answered the notice and was then, as advertised, slaughtered and consumed by Maiwis. I really think this kind of consensual cannibalism is such a perfect analog for the reciprocal relationship between writer and reader, and especially between writers and readers of autobiography. The reader of an autobiography consumes the life of the author. And the author, in turn, consumes the life of the reader that portion of it surrendered to reading or listening to the autobiography. And you have to admit that it's pretty interesting that given all the uncanny correspondences between autobiography and cannibalism, that this reading is taking place at a food court that the audience for my work, for the most part, tends to be well-built in between 18 and 30-year-olds. Granted, it's a dwindling audience if the fact that only two people showed up tonight for my reading is any indication. Panda Express worker. For the 150th fucking time, we are not here for the reading. We're on break, dickwad. Mark smiles sweetly at him.